Back with me today on County Chatter, Carrie Parcell, the county's waste reduction coordinator. Uh, we've got some really good news, and we're going to do some myth busting today about recycling, yes. right? Yes. So let's start off with there's some new let's call them rules, mm -hmm. at our transfer stations. And they're really to do with getting certain product out of the waste streams. Number one is compost, your food waste. Two would be mattresses. Three would be textiles. Let's start with the food waste, composting. Um, I discovered this this past year, mm -hmm. and I have to tell you that I literally might have like two to three bags of very small bags of trash now because we're composting. Yeah. Talk to us about compost. Yeah, so um, organics are separated food waste. Um, other parts of organics are the leaf and yard waste as well. Uh, so when we're looking at food waste, it's about 20 percent of our waste stream so when you think of why our kitchen trash gets gross it's because the food waste is rotting and it's getting stinky and that's why we right. change it out more often uh, it's also heavy um, but it's about 25 percent of our waste stream when we do an audit with our trash kitchen trash bags and uh, mass DEP has had these waste bans or rules uh, since the 90s uh, starting right. with mercury so um, that's one of the other hazardous materials that we collect at hazardous waste events so um, the, the, there's transfer stations out there. The newest is East Ham. We've got Bourne. Uh, there's, you know, basically almost every town has some sort of source separated food waste. Uh, the ban is more of a commercial ban. So right. it's for generators of 1,000 pounds or more per week. And the way that um, food generators, restaurants, retail, farmers markets, things like that, um, they can sort of gauge their food waste based on the number of customers they serve. Oh. Because on the front end and on the back end, you're looking at about a pound of waste per person. And so that has to do with the prep because we're not serving them eggshells, we're not serving them the orange peels. I mean, at least right. theoretically we're not. Um, <laughs> and then we tend to over serve. So we have lots and lots left over. And, and so we think of that as either eaten or wasted. Right. So if you have 500 folks that come through over a weekend, you could think that there's approximately 500 pounds of food waste. Wow. Um, so if you're doing that on a very busy season, you might not realize how much food waste you're actually producing as a commercial entity. Mm -hmm. uh, for residents, we do it because it gives us the feel goods, it keeps it out of the trash, and it, you know, it means that we have to change our trash bags left often. Um, so basically what you want to do is you want to have some sort of sealed container, whether it's a, a, you know, a town sealed countertop toter, whether it's a backyard composter, or just something that you found, you know, um, you know, picking, picking at the, the metal piles, if okay. you will. And um, you can take it to the transfer station if you have a sticker and you just dispose of your waste there. There's, there's um, information about what can't go in there. Yep. Um, they don't want plastic bags. They don't want disease plants. No baby diapers. No doggy right. doo doo. Um, you know, no kitty litter that's used. Right. Um, and they'll give you rules and we have vendors that come and pick it up and turn it into compost and then turn around and sell it to residents and landscapers. Right. It's amazing. At the Barnstable Transfer Station, um, you can go into the office and they will give you one of those little kitchen toters. Yep. And they'll also give you biodegradable bags that you can use in those kitchen toters, which is really great. It's right at the end of our recycling line, so it's your last stop uh, after all the bins. And this particular program, really getting this waste out of our um, uh, waste stream is really going to help. It, I didn't realize how much methane comes from food waste. Right, right. So, you know, it's 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 the leachate, it's the stinky part, it's what, you know, we're flaring off in the landfills as it yeah. biodegrades and everything sort of, you know, gets really, really dense, really, really hot and warm. And that's why you see those flare marks outside of even capped landfills is, right. is because, you know, part of that is that biodegrading food waste, that rotting food waste right. uh, that's, it's, you know, settles into the you know, into the stream. So right. um, it causes heat and it causes methane and it releases itself into our atmosphere. So um, being able to source separate it and turn it into compost means it's going back, you know, into our land, our soil, it's going back into our food production, right. it's going back into our bellies and our mouths. So right. it's, a, it's a great way to, again, turn that over and reuse something and, and, and create a valuable commodity. Right, and uh, what really just blew my mind for our transfer station rather than the backyard pieces of it, it pretty much takes every food scrap, including bones and greasy paper towels, except for walnuts mm -hmm. and walnut shells. 
Walnut, walnut shells, there's a high rate of nitrogen really? in the walnut and the walnut shells. That's why they ask you not to put it in there. Yeah. Uh, the other one, and I'm not sure, this is sort of town dependent, are yeah. avocado pits. And the reason why right. is just they're just the rock hard and you know when you're windrowing it it takes a little bit more time for them right. to sort of break down. Um, but yeah, so walnuts is a it's a nitrogen issue. Right. <laughs> we got enough of that. Yes, <laughs> That's yes, another we whole kind do. of show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is, and I'm not the expert on the nitrogen. <laughs> right. I just know why it's why the walnut shells are not allowed right. in there. So let's uh, take a nap and uh, hit our mattresses right now. Um, I know that there's a new mattress program. Um, Barnstable is participating in it. Mm -hmm. Give us just a brief overview. If you've got an old mattress, what are we going to do with it? Yeah, so as long as it's not um, infested or soiled um, and not mangled, sometimes mattresses wind up mangled. So yeah. mattresses are box springs as well. Um, so when you think of a mattress, think of a pairing like that. Sure. Um, we're, we're not including futons, we're not including, you know, crib mattresses, things like that. Uh, but mattresses and box rings, you know, twin all the way through the California King. Okay. You know, you buy a new mattress, it's old, you're turning it over, you go to your transfer station, there's a bulky fee associated with that. Um, and then they take it and then it breaks down about 90 to 95 percent. Um, and it just becomes other new materials with the metal springs and the foam and the, right. you know, the, the, the wrapping around it, the textile, the pillow stuffing, things like that. Um, and this is a now a waistband. So there's sort of a zero tolerance of mattresses going into the landfill right. with the exception of if they're contaminated, we obviously can't give, you know, recyclers contaminated, right. you know, mattresses with bug, you know, bed bugs or biosolids or anything on there. Um, and they, they just turn them over and they become new product with all of the stripping that they do. And um, I think East Ham has a gentleman there that loves to just take them apart by hand on his own. Uh, and now that we have mattress recycling, um, before the ban, my entire district was recycling mattresses, so we were kind of ahead of the curve there. Yep. Um, so Barnstable was one of the first to, to get one of the mattress grants, and now we're just sort of doing it because we have to. And it's, right. you know, again, it's good for our environment, it's good for the waste stream. So Fantastic. just something else that we're taking out of that trash. Right, exactly. And let's do that last one, which I find um, now that um, Barnstable has actually put the bins in place, is textiles. Now, textiles have an enormous... Um, uh, like problem in our waste stream. Mm -hmm. They're just not good. They're not good for the machines. They tangle up machines. The product that these um, uh, uh, textiles are can be harmful to the environment. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot wrong with putting textiles in our waste stream. Let's talk, what are textiles and what can be recycled at our transfer station? Yeah, so you see these big bins that'll say like Base State, CMRK, Salvation Army, Goodwill, and these are textile bins. What textiles are, are there things like curtains, the sweater I'm wearing, the scarf you have. Uh, one shoe is a textile that can go into these bins. Okay. Um, and some of the problem with the, the manufacturing of them is now we have fast, cheap fashion that shows up through e-commerce. 85% um, of, so if say you, 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 know, you need a dress, you ordered something online and you order two sizes just in case because you're in a crunch, you don't want to miss out because the dress came too short or too small. Right. So 85% of the time when you send that dress back the wrong size, if you will, 85% of that's going to wind up in a landfill. Oh. They don't actually resell it. They don't repackage it. They don't reshelve it. It just goes into a waste stream. And so what these textiles are, like I said, it's, it, it's you know, um, the curtains, bedding, one shoe, you know, a bra, your jacket, your scarf. Um, and what they do is then they shred them and they turn them into other types of textiles, like wiping yep. rugs for, you know, garages, DPWs, yep. the highway department. Um, they can become other parts of new textiles. Um, and again, it's just a waste. It, it's, it's about 10% of our waste stream. It's getting it out of there. It's getting it out of the landfill. And we have to put it into these specialized bins because if we put it in a recycling bin, as you mentioned, it goes to these sorting facilities that can't manage it because they tangle into the equipment. Right. And we're putting human safety at risk by having to shut down the equipment, which is a cost, and having to have some human hands go in there and detangle, which is a dangerous part of the job. So we want to keep them out of our recycling bins. We want to keep them out of our trash bin. And we want to put them in those textile bins. Uh, like mattresses, don't put wet, moldy, soiled, infested right. textiles into the bin. This is the one time that we want you to put it into a plastic bag because it protects the integrity of the items that you're putting into the bin. So you'd put them in the plastic bag, put the little arm down, throw it in, walk away, we're good, and we're doing good for the environment.
Fantastic. Ready to myth bust with me? All right, let's do some myth busting. These are myth busters. Pizza boxes. Pizza boxes are a go. Keep the pizza out of it. <laughs> right. Keep the little wax paper out of it and the little table that protects your pizza from the top of the lid. But greasy pizza boxes are A-OK -okay to recycle. Okay, I do a lot of takeout. Plastic, black plastic with the clear plastic lids. Yes. What goes in recycling or does none oh, of it go in recycling? You know, it depends on the type of clear plastic lid. So the black plastics are always a no-go and here's why. When they go into the recycling bin and they go to the sorting facility, the conveyor belts are black I and optic lighting cannot see black on black. So they get missed and they go into the residuals anyway, so it's a form of contaminant. The, the, the clear plastic tops are dependent on what type of plastic top. I mean, they're all food grade, hopefully, sure. right? right. <laughs> so they're ones, twos, and fives. But depending on the, the, the way that we like to think of plastic, especially with plastic cups, is if we squeeze it and it cracks, it's no-go. If you squeeze oh, it great. and it, it has a little give, it's quality plastic, put it in your bin. Okay. So that's sort of your best little test. That's a great way to do that. Um, let's talk a little bit about the PET number one water bottles. What mm -hmm. do they become? I know we're recycling them. Is that something that's good, bad, and different? Do they yeah. become something else? They do. So um, there are some companies that say that plastic water bottles can become plastic water bottles. Again, the problem is, is when you, you have these sort of low grade, food grade type plastics, they, the, the, the chemical compounds become um, a little bit less uh, valuable um, as far as the integrity of the plastic. So it's hard to make it a plastic again. So what they do is they turn it into things like rugs, uh, carpeting, uh, our textiles, Gore-Tex, fleece. Um, I think, you know, Patagonia uses those textiles or the uh, yep. PET number ones a lot in their manufacturing of textiles. So they're huh. basically used in, into our clothing, our rugs, and our carpets. Right. Um... Where does our recycling go? Like there's so many different answers to this that people are saying they're like, oh, it, you know, there's the trash train or there's, mm -hmm. it all goes into the landfill, but Barnstable's had a capped landfill for I can't tell you how many years now. Where does the recycling go and does it actually go somewhere that it's usable? Right, so this is where it gets complicated. Um, and the word contamination is a big, big fallacy when it comes to recycling. So if we think about our basic recyclables, you know, we've got our pickle jars, our managed jars, we've got our to-go takeouts that we're kind of like, is this the right plastic? Do I put the black, our pizza boxes, things like that. So we have our bin and for Barnstable County, it's, it's going to go to a sorting facility, um, which are recycling processors and they okay. process our recycling to go to market to be turned into other materials. So aluminum will become aluminum again, glass will become glass again, but plastics will become something else. Okay. Textiles may become textiles again, they may go into something else like a rug versus a shirt. Okay. Um, and the problem with contamination is, is if you contaminate a clean recycling load, it becomes garbage. So we, we're not in the habit of recycling garbage. So you've basically turned my nice clean recycling into, you know, and, and, and here's another interesting myth is that, you know, with plastics, they say that we're only recycling about 10 to 15% of plastics globally. Well, it's because only about 10 to 15% of plastics are recyclable. So right. when we think about <laughs> the statistic, we're going, we're not recycling. It's just going into the trash anyway. Why am I bothering wasting time and space in my garage to put all these recycling bins? Why am I bothering? Why are they telling me at the transfer station to do this, right? Well, if you think about it, yeah, 10 to 15% is getting recycled, but 10 to 15% are recyclable. Everything right. else is not. Okay. And that's the question of EPR, this extended producer responsibility, where we're mandating the manufacturers of plastics to make sure that they're, they're creating quality recyclable plastics so that when we send it back through the stream, they're getting recycled at 100% rate. Or, all, you know, nothing's 100%. But, right, right. But then we can get to that goal. All right. I need an encyclopedia to keep up with what's recyclable and not what's recyclable mm -hmm. it just seems like the it's not that the the products change is that i just don't understand it sometimes there's like a billion numbers on the bottoms of these products is there a place i can go to like find this stuff out yeah of course so another sort of myth before we find the knowledge uh the numbers and the chasing arrows on the bottom 
The numbers have to do with the type of plastic it is manufactured with. Those are the chemical compounds, you know, the ones, the twos, and the fives. That means it's food safe. If it's, you know, a different, it's, it's you know, a number four could be like an HDPE or, you know, bubble wrap, things like sure. that. Shrink wrap is a number six, right? So depending on the type of plastic, that's why you see those numbers on there. The chasing arrows is sort of a green wasp fallacy that we've sort of been like, oh, it says I can recycle it, I can't. That's not necessarily true. So that's that's the bust. But to know um, if it, if they're busted from the chasing arrows and the numbers, right. and you're kind of you know what do I do? I need an encyclopedia. You go to recyclesmartma.org. Um, it's we call it RISMA, RSMA.org, um, and you go in there and there's a recycling widget on the top home page, and you type in white coffee cup lid, um, car bumper. <laughs> uh, you know, text my t-shirt, you know, a bowling sure. ball, whatever. And it'll tell you what can go into the recycling. If it's, if it's, you know, the basic bin or like a textile, it's going to say you can recycle this, not in the bin. Here's where you go to do it. And then there's another link that has a list of all of these textile bins. As long as they've been recorded and reported, they're on there. And you can say, hey, you know, I live in Barnesville. I want to know other than at the transfer station because I don't have a sticker. I, you know, I have curbside right. at my home, but I want to get these textiles. It'll tell them what they can do with those textiles and how to um, properly dispose of them in the recycling. That's fantastic. So let's kind of end on this. We have three R's. What's yes. the proper uh, order of the three R's? Is it recycling, reduce, and reuse? Is it reuse, reduce, Recycling, what are the, what, what are the, what's the order of the three R's? Yes, so we want to reduce. Reduce. Reduce our footprint is the best way to get things out of the trash, out of the recycling, out of, you know, our economy, out of our environment, right? 80% of ocean trash comes from the land. Right. And so it's a weather event, it's going through the storm, somehow it's winding up in our ocean. So if we can just, you know, reduce Something like if you're like me, I'm a chapstick lover. So I buy the chapstick that's in the, the, the cardboard um, that will break down instead of the little plastic tubes. Yep. And I buy it without the box around it or I buy it without the little plastic casing around it. Um, so I'm just reducing the footprint there. Okay. So it's reduce and then we want to reuse it. Let's reuse it. And we got to get clever sometimes. Like is, you know, just because it once was this, does it mean that it can't become something else in our lives? Right. I have, you know, little yogurt jars that are glass that are now candles. <laughs> and I burnt right. down the empty wax in my old candles and made new ones. Yep. So I'm, you know, and then that, you know, that tempered glass is not recyclable. So don't put your candle jars in the recycling. Um, but you can reuse those glass jars if you want and make new candles or whatever. Mm -hmm. Use it as a penny jar once you clean right. it out. Um, and then it's recycle. So recycling is the last step to the trash bin. So the trash bin is the ultimate. That's, right. that's where the end all be all of our, the, the life of our items. And recycling is that last step. So if you can do something other, and there's many other R's, refurbish, re-gift, you know, right. re, you, you know, re cons, you know, consign, give, gift. Right. You know, there's all these things that we can do that's not just reducing our footprint, reusing something that we already have, and, and then at the very end, recycling it if there's nothing else left to do with it. So That's fantastic. There's plenty of other things to do with, with our items, especially if they're it? good and usable. Right? <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and, and there are some very, very creative people out there doing things with some of the items. And your thrift stores, obviously, if the item is in good shape, yeah. um, you know, there's, there's places that you can donate to as well. So you're going to reduce, reuse, recycle. There's textiles, composting, Mattresses. plastics, myth busting. <laughs> this episode had it all, folks. Thank you, Carrie, for uh, joining us today again. Um, yeah. All of this information is great to keep our environment in this place yeah. really special, right? Yeah, and I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody may have and that sure. you might have, and I'm happy to share the, 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 the wealth of knowledge I have. I do get questions that I don't know the answer to, but I will find you the answer. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.